Hmm, a few clouds. And the moon. Quite the sight when you step out the door and look up. It's framed by the trees. Pretty heavy dew this morning. Especially when you get over here where the dew makers are. Yeah, and mom's irrigation ran. But no, barn roofs are sopping wet. So, see what the day brings. Try to get to town to pick some twine up. Try to remember where I left off yesterday, because honestly, really all I remember is we need to get twine. <laughs> just been one of those weeks. Hey, this is a new week. New adventure. Hopefully a good adventure. Oh, look who's first. Hmm. But look who also is up here. What do you know? And yeah, of course, who's hiding right behind her? Got both cows together today. What about you? Oh, she's pushing you up so you get some scratchings? You want some scratchings? No? Yeah? Maybe? Okay. Good morning. Maybe you're the one. No, you don't have the right mark on the side of your neck, but you do have the right eye pigment like the one I saw getting bred the other day. Hopefully, we don't have a bunch of late ones. Good morning, Ruby. Hey, grown girl. Huh? Okay, yeah, I know. That's probably enough. It's been one of those mornings. Stuffed up. Moving slow. But, still get this done. Looks just a little different than the new one, doesn't it? I mean, now that you've seen the front end of the new one so much. Everything kind of goes to the same place, but it's all different. And this pickup, single loggers instead of the double. Um, what I do understand, though, on uh, 3 by 3 and the 3 by 4 balers, on the newer ones, they still only have the single auger. It's just on the 4 by 4 baler that has the double. But am I talking about the lift cylinder? So this one is, it's a straight push. Sorry, I'm trying to fumble and grab the phone different. It's parallel to the ground. The uh, hinge point is still the same place. It's up here, but you're pushing straight out. And actually the hinge point's almost, almost straight above the, and it is just about straight above the cylinder. So this cylinder, it should literally last forever because it has the advantage. Now, the bitch is, I looked, the cylinder's short. This cylinder really only has about a four inch stroke. And the other one's supposed to be six and a half is what the, what the parts book online shows. And suppose we can discuss a little of the twine running comes out of the back of the boxes and goes directly through spring tensioners but then these just kind of come around the corner where the others come down in here and underneath where these go through the double gear tensioners totally different alignment to line them up with those but one thing that is the same those cylinders are the same, except on this baler, your only hydraulic pressure is into this end to push the sides in. This is not factory, obviously, right? I originally, two little tiny plastic breathers, one on each side, and we changed that. One, because the breathers were always full of crap, and two, Half inch air coupling. 
the only way to get these backed off. You can't just put pressure to it and do anything. You break the hydraulic line loose and by putting air to here and using the ball valve to meter how much you're pushing, then you can shorten those cylinders up and of course you lose about a gallon and a half of oil. That's what we did for a long time. Very long time. Um, in here, pretty much the same amount of room to get in on top of the needles to run the twine. You can kind of see the twine on this one back there. But this one, there's more room underneath there from there to the ground. A lot more room, really. I mean, the other one. This one, it's tied under there. Uh, the other one, or this one crawling underneath that axle in the field, I barely fit. And the one thought I have when I do that is when we had to put new tires on, it's because I blew a tire in the field. That's from there to there is probably over a foot and a half. And when that suddenly drops, that axle's only about an inch off the ground. So when you're underneath one of these and you've had the, you know, the tire blow and it's instant, you're thinking, God, I hope nothing happens. So anyway, I suppose that's enough gabbing about this. I mean, otherwise, there's just about the same thing, right? They do the same job. Um, this, the blower on the nodders is aftermarket, or afterthought, I should say. That's all factory. I think the pump had been replaced before we got it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> it is one of those mornings. Obviously, twine boxes are different. These twine boxes get full of shit. So, even though I was surprised, oh my god, there's no twine in it. We needed the twine. Um, depending on the year, we usually do pull the twine. Simply because it's the only way you can clean the twine boxes out. And on that one in there, you know, the twine boxes weren't clean when we got it, but when was the last time they were actually cleaned out? So, should last a long time without having to pull twine. But it really been nice if it was like the pictures before we bought it, and, and all those twine boxes were full when we got it. But oh well. Well, look who's here this morning. I know it's yeah, look, Ty's here. Oh! Hey, can I drink? downhill from me. It's a long ways down from me. Oh, that's a bam -ha. Good morning, Blakely. Look at them. Huh? Hey. Touch, hey, look at them fancy shoes. Fancy yeah. bell bottoms. Yeah. Got you your come shades come on. Come Bow in your hair. New shades, man. You need a hey. little polarized version. What? Don't do that, baby. Don't do what? Went out the back of the heel, the heel He was sniffing her. I didn't see him go after. Okay. Anyway, so there's Blakely for the morning. Better be nice. They don't give those away though. Put a conditioner in that, and I could have some fun. But I think it's a 16 foot cut, and it's way too big. So I just picked up twine. Only got 10 balls. That's uh, still 500 bucks. Yeah, story time while we're looking at the scenery. I got in to get the twine and get the load in it. It's only been only 10. It's still 500 bucks. And then I said, you know, 20 years ago we were custom bailing north of town. And I said, we're from south of town. And I said, every morning since I bailed all night, I would uh, stop by and get 20 balls of twine every single morning for two weeks. In today's prices, you figure that out. I mean, that's a thousand bucks a day just for twine. So, anyway. And I was going to say something else too and I forgot it. Oh, the salesman that I called to see who they were, if they were still hauling equipment once in a while for people. They just wanted told me to call Riverbrook Trucking. He asked if we got that bit. I said, yep. And I said, been working on it. And he says, well, for, 
for the, for what she spent on it. He says, I said, yeah. I said, lack of maintenance was the biggest thing. And I said, it's just now hopefully finally ready to go. And, and he says, yeah, for, for what you paid for it. And I go, yeah, because literally the next cheapest thing, I mean, if, other than at auction, was over 30 grand. And I mean, in Montana, Wyoming, or Colorado, so you're looking at probably five grand to get it here, if not more. You know, granted, we got, off the top of my head, I'm gonna say we got about $2,000 in parts, maybe maybe 3,000. So, you know, we're still ahead of the game. It's just that we're so far behind. I mean, the grass seed straw be better hay at the moment. Well, I shouldn't say that. Grass seed straw isn't always better. Missing the seed heads, it's missing a lot of nutrition, even though our shit's overripe. Twine boxes are full. Don't know what to do with that cylinder yet. I mean, four inches of travel is enough to get it up, so it's not on the ground. Uh, yeah. Got this side bent back up, so it's almost parallel to that, not quite. That was an old radiator hose that came out of the house. You know, something Dad took off something years ago. Just the right size. So that'll protect it there. I still got to put, I'm going to strap it on here. I might actually, there's a bolt hole right there. I might see if I have a regular clamp. And got these all tied together up to here. Just painted that. Don't have any red paint, so that's what we're using. I still need, I'm not going to use a bungee on this. I need something more substantial, my opinion. Although, a bungee might be fine. Well, I don't know. I've seen worse. May take a piece of big better twine and tie across with that bungee so if the bungee breaks, we're not screwed. This is about the next step. Keep in mind they settled because this is sitting on here. But I know I gotta go a link at least maybe two. And ah, Becky's back. I got back from town and she was just leaving. Mom's dog had to go down and get her stitches taken out. And uh, they cleaned her butthole while she was there too. She should be a perfect asshole for a little bit. So now her dog can have more free reign. But that keeps everything together. It's all basically coming to a common spot in the middle and it can move. That isn't going to catch anything. I really probably should undo those and pull more slack up, but maybe put the slack up here. But that's the natural lay of that already, so I think we're good. That's the only thing that's kind of wonky, but it's got to lay, otherwise, it'll screw it up. And still trying to figure out where to put this. I flipped it over on there so it's different right there is all the way up and I haven't decided yet if I can do that if I can do that I may just bolt a piece on here just so it can't come out I mean if it's hanging there it's not but you get bouncing around the field and it'll come out of that I also thought about trying to come off that bolt with something, which that's still an option. I just gotta see what I can find. So, 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 want this some bitch in the field. And we ain't even got the rake finished getting it hooked up yet. Yeah, I might be a little farther by now this morning, but Ty's been babysitting since Becky was gone and Blakey was just starting to take a nap when Becky left. Oh, I know something else I want to do. There's two fuse holders up there, and neither one of them has a weather cover over them. I need to see if I might happen to have the covers. I might. If not, we'll tape them up or something. Because that's no bueno that way, in my opinion. Other than that, I think. Fire up, grease the chains. I wish this was a little cleaner. Um, I would 
I, I wish it was easy to turn these things over by hand. It would make the knotters cycle. And a small baler is easy. I mean, God, we've done that for years, especially if there's no bale in the chamber. It's easy to roll them over and make sure the knotters are working. And this one, that's uh, just not, not easy to do, especially once that needle carriage starts moving. I mean, I don't know what the, what those needles weigh, because honestly, I have never had one off. I don't ever want to have one off. But, you know, they're, what are they? Eighth inch. And I would imagine the back piece welded in there is probably at least eighth inch. And, oh, it's at least six inches. That's over. It's about eight inches across here. Plus, that's all quarter inch. Tube's even heavier. That's a lot of weight. And then once the knotters hit, they don't turn easy to begin with. So, anyway. Must be feeding time since the dogs just came out. That's what I did up there. I braided some of that blue twine and crimped S hooks on the end. I'm going to leave the bungee cord on there. And I totally forgot where I ran the lines over the top of that. I totally forgot that I was going to find a regular clamp, bolt-on clamp, and <laughs> put that on there. It's on there with two zip ties. Got the jack handle figured out and hung. Got our support chain tightened up. Moved the hook one link and seems to be just about right. I can't find anything else to do on this thing other than oil chains. Um, we're going to oil the pickup chain before we start, but the knotter chain and the stuffer drive on the other side, I think we're going to run it part of a day or a day first, get some of the rust busted off of it, and then we'll oil it. Um, tractor does need the AC charged. I hope all it needs is topped off. Oh, I got everything out of the service truck. I just... When I got it, the sun was still hitting about to the freaking light on the tractor. and Yeah, I didn't want to stand out there. It's warm. Um, we're, it's over 80. It's freaking humid as hell, thanks to yesterday. Hopefully tomorrow we'll actually get it out. If I can get Ty to stick around long enough for that. And in the meantime... That's what my console should read. Not those exact figures and words, but I got to figure out how to get in and set things because I don't know the name that's on it. I can't think of it. It's on there, but I, I don't need that name. Um, I don't know what my load is supposed to be. This graph is the pressures for the load sensors on the plunger arms. On this one, it happens to let you know when you're actually going a 1,000 RPMs. I guess that means I can leave the tractor set someplace else. Um, that's the pressure on the hydraulic pressure holding the bales. That's the slip clutch on the stuffer drive. Those are all things that the other console had, except they were, you know, obviously laid out different because all it was was an a screen to show you and it would flash through those things as you were going. So sometimes it was a bitch because you had to look and go, okay, that's not what I want to see. I want to see what this is and you had to wait for it to come back around. But trying to figure out and it's not written in my kind of English. I mean it is, but it isn't. It's just not telling me what my brain needs to see to figure it out. So anyway, I'm going to go feed and put a video up and then maybe come back out and do the AC. Or I got other things I can do early in the morning too. I still got to finish cutting at the neighbors and ruin a driveline cover, finish ruining a driveline cover. Um, we're just going to run that cylinder the way it is. It's off the ground. Tractor's below grade, so, I mean, it'll be farther off the ground than that. 
it's lifting it enough for in the field anyway. If I got to take it off, I'll take it off. There's, we got two different places in town I can take it to, and I may just take it to Tom. It'd be probably just as quick if you can get on it. And Tom might be better in case it needs any machining. Because I have no idea why it's not going all the way out. I mean, who knows? Until you take it apart. I mean, it doesn't seem to be anything with the pickup because we can throw a jack under it. It doesn't get harder to pick up. It picks up freely. I mean, we can pick it up until that is almost hitting that cutout. There's no problems there. It goes right up. So, anyway, <clears throat> hope you all had a great Monday. Hope everybody has a great Tuesday, and we'll see what tomorrow brings. Thanks for watching, everybody.